best skybox. Skybox. The skybox. Skybox. Definitely gonna be alright. Well, let's get right into it, guys. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're gonna get right into it. A lot of things. We mean you were we were talking to one day over. Yeah. Shout out to my man Tony Pete. What's up, Tony? What up, Mark was popping. What's going on, Pete? So we were talking a lot about everything, man. We we're talking about family. Yep. Uh, we we're talking yep. about the motherland. That yeah. was the big that was a big conversation for yeah, us. Man. You know I mean, I thought that man, you and I were talking about the like dual citizenships and all yep. of that. I mean, we were yep. Deep into it. Yeah, man. So let's just get into so, it. Let's get into the roots right now. Let's go yeah, deep. let's go deep. Right. So where'd your where'd your family originate from? So um, my dad is from Ghana, West Africa. My mom is from North Carolina. Way different. Yeah. Way different. <laughs> but they both come from land. They both just come from land and, and really not much around, you know. Right. So my dad came to the country when he was about 20 years old. And he uh, came over actually to be a priest. Oh. Yeah, he came over. And then he got over here, and then um, I guess things changed. He didn't really want to do it no more. I really got to ask him more about that, how that transition happened. But he ended up going to school because they believe, we believe, just in, in education. And any way you right. can get education in Africa, man, you go away to school. So, like, once you get a certain age, you say goodbye to the family. You just go away to school, middle school, high school. Um, you do your school, your schooling. It's important. That's that's your way out. That's the way you're gonna make a, a life for yourself. So right. they take that seriously. So he had an opportunity to come to America, and he jumped on it. And um, he has nine brothers and sisters. He was the only one that came over, and uh, or was had the opportunity to come over. And um, he took he took advantage of it. He got over here, and um, of course he came over. And um, you know he's twenty something coming to America. There was things that we offered that. He just had back home, so right. he fell into some trouble, you know, drinking and smoking and a little bit. And uh, but he got it together, you know what I mean? He got right. it together and um, was able to go to school for business. Long story short, he got uh, an opportunity to open a, um, a branch of um, a company called DHL. They're like Federal Express. Okay. But they um, same thing. They they do packages like UPS and all that. So he was going to open a branch in Harrisburg, and he had an opportunity. And that's what brought us from uh, Baltimore, where I was born, and uh, brought us to Harrisburg. And um, so we got here, and uh, life was good for a little bit. And then something happened with that job, and um, it was hard in Harrisburg at that time. When I was young, he lost that job, and uh, um, he just couldn't find work here. You know, it was frustrating to him, and so he ended up having to go back to school. And uh, um over time, they, him and my mom split, and um, they, they both went to separate ways. Still talk to this day, but you know they they just to do their different things. And uh, me and my sister came up, and then I've been in Harrisburg ever since. You know, my sister ended up going to college, and she moved back home to to Maryland. And uh, my mom uh, retired from the state, and she moved back to North Carolina. And my dad's working um, in D.C., but he lives in West Virginia. But he's retiring in January, and so um, he's actually going to be living half here and half. Back home in Africa. So. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's what's so. Up. Oh, let me ask you how did how did you find out your your origin that where you were from? So my dad, I always knew growing up, my dad was from Ghana, West Africa. We always, you know, my dad loves to talk. He he'd be on the phone talking back home to people, and you could hear him speaking a different language. So it really wasn't nothing new that I just it was just part of who I was. You know, I, mm -hmm. he would eat certain foods, and then we would uh, he would let me try it and. He would cook different things. My mom would cook it. You know, my mom would eat it so she could cook African food. She could eat African food. It was just nothing new to me. That's just what we did. Uh -huh. And uh, so growing up, you know, it was, um, we would always have African parties. Even in Harrisburg, there were a couple of African families. So we'd all get together and party and um, listen to African music. And um, that was just a way of life. It was just, yeah. I know that's right. What's the difference? from what people see on TV to what you see in reality when it comes to Africa? Oh man, there's so many different aspects to Africa. So where I'm from, Ghana, West Africa, it's kind of modernized, you know, they got 
uh, some areas have paved roads. Um, the capital city is, is Accra. It has a uh, nightclub, it has banks, it has beautiful houses, it has high rises, it has apartment buildings, it has uh, taxis and, and Uber and um, colleges and um, restaurants. I mean, it's booming. It's, it's, you wouldn't know, if really, if you go there, you probably wouldn't want to come back. I mean, shops and beaches and it's a beautiful area, you know, and then there's parts of Ghana that, you know, it's not so uh, modernized. They have huts and um, when you when you build your, you plant your crops and you have farms and you have farmland and and people are struggling. Um, and then other parts of Africa is the same way. Other parts you have your, your lions and, and zebras and all that. But where I'm from, you really don't have a lot of animals. You have goats, cows, horses. And you might see them walking along as you as you in the car driving or something, right. walking right beside you. But it's not really nothing to see um, some animals just walking alongside you. They keep to themselves. You keep to yourself. It's just nothing new. Chickens. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was yeah. in uh, what was it? in Jamaica, and that was the first time I ever seen goats on the side of the road. I was like, "Yo, what is yeah. this?" Yeah. And I remember the tour guy saying, "Like those goats can go for miles during the day." Yeah. They will come back home at the end. Of yeah, the yeah. It's, and I was like, "Wow, that's that, that was kind of interesting." And that's how they. I mean, over there, you raise, you raise your chickens, you raise your goats, and then, and then you um, kill them and you eat them. That's how. Right. That's how we we do. So like, um, over there, it's just the food is just it's amazing. Like the food, the the the, the ground itself is so plentiful. Mm-hmm. Um, you can plant anything, and it comes out, you know, with pure, pure. Yeah, just the. And the color of it, like the nutrients in the ground just makes anything come. Your, even your trees are extra green. It's not like a green hair. It's a deep green. It's a, the flowers are like eagle green. Color. It's like, oh, yeah, like it's eagle like green. Deep color and, and everything is it's just beautiful there. The sun, the sun is hot, but um, you get used to it. It's not like if you go in the right month. So they have a dry season and a rain season. They don't really have cold. They have dry and, and wet. Mm-hmm. So if you go kind of toward the tail end of the, the rain season, it's perfect, the weather's perfect, 70 degrees, you get the, the wind blowing because you're on the coast. Where I'm from, we're kind of on the coast of um, the ocean, so you get that breeze and, man, you just love being outside. Even though it's hot, you get a little bit of shade and it's just like the perfect feeling, man. And you're eating the good food, um, plantain and certain dishes, the stews, and um, it's just, just Africa. Just Africa, man. And people there are so friendly. Man, it's just so friendly. Welcome you. Hey, man, welcome home. You know, handshakes and uh, hugs. And and then the traditions are teaching you stuff I didn't know because my dad really didn't teach me. He used to get in trouble by his sister. She's like, you ain't teaching them nothing. No, you're not in the traditions and stuff. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I have an African name. You know, my, my African name's uh, Akwasi, they call it. What's that mean? Uh, it, so when you're born on a certain day in, in Ghana, uh, you have a name for the day of the week you're born. And I was born on Sunday, so it's Akwasi. Um, I'm not sure exactly the, the meaning. I have to look it up, actually. You know, I did at one point, I just don't remember. But, um, so everyone has an African name, you know, that where the day of the uh, week you're born on. So it, it's pretty cool, like, and it's just a, some traditions that you learn, like, you don't do anything with your left hand, like that, they consider that an insult. Like I'm a um, left-hander. Me too. So I'm just thinking, like, I didn't really know that until, you know, after I left five years ago that you're really not supposed to eat with your left. So when we eat, we eat with our hands there. Like, everything's a stew or a rice, and you just kind of dip it. You dip it and eat it. But I would eat with my left hand. You're not supposed to eat with your left hand. You're not supposed to give anybody anything with your left hand. You're not supposed to shake with your left hand, which we don't. Oh, yeah, we don't shake. Yeah, yeah. But so the left hand, the reason why it's an insult is because the left hand is usually the hand that you um, go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, you wipe yourself with it. And so if you then give someone something with it, or serve someone, it's, it's called that's a sin of disrespect. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's so, very, very, very interesting. Go to YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button. It's only free 99 Free 99 Are we only on YouTube? Nope. Are we on Google? Yep. How about Anchor? Yep. Are we on Spotify? Yep. How can they find us? Search the sky.
Thank you for watching the Sky Box. And remember, click one of these three videos that relate to the Sky Box and click that like and subscribe button. It's only $3.99. And also, be good to yourself, y'all.